Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Songbird Sade Knits. My name is Mercedes and I'm coming to you from Guelph, Ontario. And this is a projects episode. So I do have a longer form podcast um, where I try to do an episode once per month with, with lots of knitting content and um, other crafts as well. Uh, but I also like to do these little short videos on particular projects that I've knit, both for my own um, way of cataloging what I've done and also um, to share my experience with you all and to make it easier for you to find that content on the internet. So today I'm talking about this beautiful light summery tea, the ranunculus uh, top by Midori Hiroshi of Knit Cafe. And this pattern's available on uh, Ravelry and it's a very popular pattern. I'm sure if you're here, you've heard of it and are wondering about uh, why all the hype around this beautiful sweater. Um, well, I can share my experience with you. Um, so first of all, it's a very versatile uh, pattern. The pattern is written for one size fits all. Um, so it's a very oversized garment that is flattering on many body types and you can also adjust for length where it's needed to suit your style or your body. Um, there's also a modification in the pattern for a larger bust. So it sort of tells you the one size can accommodate this sort of range of sizes. And then if you need a larger size, there are specific instructions for that as well. And um, the other nice thing about this pattern, which makes it so versatile and appealing for many people, is that you can knit it in pretty much any weight of yarn. I don't know about bulky or chunky, but um, uh, if you scan the project's pages on Ravelry, you'll see that it's knit in just pretty much any yarn you can think of um, using the same needle size that's in the pattern. So it is very versatile and many people make several uh, versions of this uh, to go with various outfits and to accommodate different yarn weights. So what I'm wearing today, this is knit in Barocco uh, Quechua. I'll put that in the description box below so you can find it. Um, <clears throat> and it's, I'll put the colorway down there too. I can't remember what it's called, um, but it's sort of a peachy, sort of a dusty rose with a bit of a coral look to it. Um, when it's put up against pink, it actually has a bit of a corally hue to it. So very flattering, very nice. And it, this yarn is a mixture of uh, yak, baby alpaca, and merino. So it's a really soft yarn, very good next to skin, and perfect for summer wear because it, um, because it is so soft against the skin. And, um, the weight that I used is, um, it's, it might be considered a DK or a fingering. I, I'm not really sure. I'll put that in the description below as well. But it's, um, it's a fine yarn with quite a hefty twist on it. So when you're knitting with it, it's very smooth and um, actually fresh from the skein. It has a bit of a sheen to it. But then after blocking, um, some of the fuzziness of particularly the alpaca expresses itself, the alpaca and yak. So it softens a little bit and has a nice little bit of a fuzz to it after blocking. So it's a nice yarn. I think it's good for people who have possibly uh, wool sensitivities. Um, and I pretty much followed the pattern. So I opted, for, there's two options for the neckline. There's a narrow neckline and a wide. I opted for the wide. And I did short rows at the front and at the back as per the pattern. Um, I also knitted the recommended length here, the recommended length for the twisted rib band. The only thing I modified, which um, is very easy to do, is that the pattern calls for the short sleeve version to be just back to just bind, just bind off at the um, when you separate for the sleeves. I didn't do that because I don't like that rolled hem look. Instead, I held those stitches and came back to them after finishing the body and I just did a simple um, one by one twisted 
rib the same as on the neckline. So that's all I did on mine. And um, I will just sort of stand up for you so you can maybe see how it, how it hangs. see the beautiful lace detail there it's uh, there's kind of like a flower pattern and then there's some um, some very interesting textured stitches here and that's continued around the yoke and um, I don't know maybe you can see a bit of the um, the fuzz on the yarn maybe not so that's how it fits and it is cropped um, and oversized as you can see so it has sort of a dropped um, a dropped shoulder, uh, not really, it's a yoke, so it's not really a dropped shoulder, but it is a really deep yoke. And then there's actually a little tiny bit of raglan shaping after you're done the yoke part. So it's um, really comfortable. And uh, I find the recommended crop for me, and I have a long torso, torso, the recommended length here for the crop is perfect. Excellent for high-waisted pants or a skirt and really nice over top of a dress. It kind of just hits where the waist is so it doesn't um, make your outfit look too blousy. Um, it's an easy pattern to follow. I would say you should be familiar with some lace work before knitting this and um, it calls for German short rows which are in my opinion the easiest short rows to do and they look really nice. Um, but you may wish to familiarize yourself with them a little bit before doing it. I've knitted this now twice and I am familiar with short rows and I still have found that on both of my attempts of this uh, ranunculus top, the short rows actually turned out uneven, both at the front and at the back. And um, I'm going to knit this again, so I'll hopefully find out what the issue is there. It could be that I just, the way the short rows are written is line by line. That's not suitable for me. I really need to sort of condense that information into something that's easy to remember. So the next time I knit this, I will try that. Um, and if it's not an issue with the short rows, it's, uh, it's quite possible that the twist of the garment just makes it look a bit uneven. Um, so you can try to adjust for that when you block the garment, which is what I have done. And I do find because it's so oversized and such a wide neck that uh, you don't really notice it too much. So yeah, that's the beautiful ranunculus that um, is very popular for good reason. And um, I will also mention another thing that people love about this and that I also enjoyed was that um, many of the textured stitches, particularly um, I mean, this is just sort of standard lace work, but these textured stitches that appear above and below the lace are um, very fun to work. They're very different. I've never encountered them before, and I really enjoyed working them. So the yoke really keeps you going. And it's also a very quick knit. So, you know, if this is your style, if you, if you can picture yourself wearing something like this in the summer or in the cusp seasons, just as a nice um, sort of fancy layer to put over your clothing. Um, you might find yourself knitting multiples in different colors for that reason. So I do, I do like it very much. Um, what else can I say about it? I think the next one I am, I actually have already purchased yarn for the next couple because um, I really do like to have I wear kind of plain clothing and then my knitwear is usually my statement piece so I love to layer with with uh, hand knits so I anticipated making a few more of these to and different colors to match different outfits in the summertime so I've already bought the yarn for those different yarns and um, I think next time I will go for the narrow neckline just so that it's not so um, so loose. I love this drapey look. I think it's really cute, especially if you have a tank top underneath or um, yeah, a spaghetti strap dress. It's really attractive. Um, but next time I'll go for the shorter neckline and I might even do 
three quarter length sleeves. We shall see as a test how that works. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll say just about choosing yarns for this project, it, uh, it looks to me like you can, in terms of the texture of the yarn, you can go for anything you want. Um, in the sample photos for the pattern, there are a few different types of yarns used, but the sort of recommended type is um, something with a mohair. So a mohair blend, or you can hold two strands together, one wool, one with mohair. And then you get this really fuzzy effect and it's like a really airy, uh, light garment. So I will certainly try that for my next one. But you can also do something totally different. You could do a really squishy matte yarn, like something in 100% um, merino. And then all that does is it makes your stitches look uh, more defined and more crisp. So if that's a look that you like and you'd like to try that, this pattern will suit that perfectly as well. So if you have any questions about my experience knitting the ranunculus, please feel free to um, uh, post a comment below and I would be very happy to respond to you. Um, if you'd like to share some of your own experience below, I would love to read those comments and I'm sure many other viewers would benefit from hearing your experience as well. And of course, you can also find me on Ravelry as Songbird Save Knits, and I will have a ranunculus page posted there soon. Um, but I do tend to share more details on, on my videos. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram as Songbird Save, and you can direct message me there too if you have any questions or comments. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I wish you luck and happiness and joy in your knitting projects and specifically if you choose to knit the ranunculus sweater. Bye! Hey, I'm glad you stayed until the end because I forgot to mention a very important detail. Uh, the pattern calls for um, six millimeter needles to get gauge. Um, now, many people have found that that's perfect for them in order to get gauge for this pattern. I actually knit this sweater in this particular yarn on six millimeter needles because, um, well, if you watch my other episodes, you know I don't do gauge swatches. Um, and usually it's not a problem. So I just went for it and this is a very loose open gauge. So I thought um, even if it's a bit smaller than the recommended size, it's still gonna be okay. And it wasn't okay. I knit the whole sweater and I could get it on, it fit, but it looked like a child's sweater. It just didn't look right. So I had to unravel the whole thing and start again. And I went up one full millimeter. So I knit mine on seven millimeter needles. And um, I could see myself knitting this even on seven and a half millimeter needles. So that's just one thing to keep in mind before you start. If you like doing gauge swatches, then go for it and you shouldn't have any trouble finding the right needle size. If you don't like doing gauge swatches, I recommend um, looking through the patterns on Ravelry or whatever, um, whatever um, site you use for uh, your knitting information and try to see what other people have done. If you're a very loose knitter, then you may wish to go down a needle size. If you're a very tight knitter like I am, you will very likely need to go up and um, you might need to go up um, as much as I did or even more to get the correct size and to get the correct fit and drape in the garment that you're looking for. So good luck to you.